The Determine HIV-1-2 antigen-antibody combo procedure training for venous whole blood samples. The Determine HIV-1-2 antigen-antibody combo is an immunochromatographic test for the simultaneous and separate qualitative detection of free HIV-1, P24 antigen and antibodies to HIV-1 and HIV-2 in human blood. Test Kit Components each Determine HIV-1-2 antigen-antibody combo kit contains one aluminum Ziploc pouch containing five test cards with 25 test units, desiccant package, chase buffer, quick reference guide, package insert, subject information notices, customer letter, disposable capillary tubes for collection and transfer of finger stick samples, and disposable workstations. Materials required and available as an accessory to the test kit. Determine HIV-1-2 antigen antibody combo controls. Each kit control box contains four vials. One non-reactive control, one HIV-1 reactive control, one HIV-2 reactive control, and one HIV-1 P24 antigen control. Materials required but not provided. To perform the test with a venous whole blood specimen, you will need a clock, watch or other timing device, and a precision pipette capable of delivering 50 microliters of sample with disposable tips to be used in lieu of the disposable capillary tubes supplied with the kit. Additionally, you will need disposable gloves, a biohazard waste container, and collection devices. Test and sample storage requirements. The test kit or aluminum Ziploc pouch containing test cards and chase buffer must be stored at 2 to 30 degrees Celsius or 36 to 86 degrees Fahrenheit until the expiration date. Whole blood collected venously may be stored at room temperature, 15 to 30 degrees Celsius or 59 to 86 degrees Fahrenheit for up to two days before testing. If testing will not be performed within two days of sample collection, whole blood collected venously should be stored at 2 to 8 degrees Celsius or 36 to 46 degrees Fahrenheit if the test is to be run within six days of collection. Do not freeze whole blood specimens. If stored at 2 to 8 degrees Celsius or 36 to 46 degrees Fahrenheit, bring specimens to room temperature before testing. Mix specimen well by gentle inversion of the tube immediately before testing. Test Preparation Open the aluminum Ziploc pouch containing the Determine HIV-1-2 antigen antibody combo test cards. Remove the desired number of test units from the five test unit card by bending and tearing at the perforation. Return the unused test units to the aluminum pouch and carefully close the Ziploc so that the cards are not exposed to ambient humidity during storage. Store the unused cards and test units only in the aluminum pouch containing the desiccant package. Remove the protective foil cover from each test unit. Lay the test unit flat in the disposable workstation. The test should be initiated within two hours after removing the protective foil cover from each test unit. Do not touch the sample pad with your fingers. Use of the disposable workstation is optional. If the disposable workstation is not used, place the test unit on a flat surface. Venus Whole Blood Procedure. Using a precision pipette with a disposable tip, apply 50 microliters of whole blood by touching the tip of the pipette to the sample pad marked by the arrow symbol. When all of the blood is transferred to the sample pad, wait one minute to ensure the chase buffer does not overflow the sample pad. Then add one drop of chase buffer to the sample pad. Read the test result between 20 and 30 minutes after the addition of the chase buffer. Do not read the test result after 30 minutes. Interpretation of results. Antibody reactive, two lines control line and antibody line. A pink-red control line appears in the control area and a pink-red antibody line must appear in the lower test area of the test unit. The intensity of the control and antibody lines may vary. 
any visible pink-red color in both the control and lower test areas, regardless of intensity, is considered reactive. A reactive test result means that HIV-1 and or HIV-2 antibodies have been detected in the specimen. The test result is interpreted as preliminary positive for HIV-1 and or HIV-2 antibodies. Antigen reactive two lines, control line and antigen line. A pink-red control line appears in the control area, and a pink-red antigen line must appear in the upper test area of the test unit. The intensity of the control and antigen lines may vary. Any visible pink-red color in both the control and upper test areas, regardless of intensity, is considered reactive. A reactive test result means that HIV-1 P24 antigen has been detected in the specimen. The test result is interpreted as preliminary positive for HIV-1 P24 antigen. A test result that is preliminary positive for HIV-1 P24 antigen in the absence of reactivity for HIV-1 or HIV-2 antibodies may indicate an acute HIV-1 infection in the test subject. In this case, the acute HIV-1 infection is distinguished from an established HIV-1 infection in which antibodies to HIV-1 are present. Antibody reactive and antigen reactive Three lines, control, antibody, and antigen lines. A pink-red control line appears in the control area, and a pink-red antibody line must appear in the lower test area, and a pink-red antigen line must appear in the upper test area of the test unit. The intensity of the control, antibody, and antigen lines may vary. Any visible pink-red color in the control area, the lower test area, and the upper test area, regardless of intensity, is considered reactive. The test result is interpreted as preliminary positive for HIV-1 and or HIV-2 antibodies and HIV-1 P24 antigen. Non-reactive result. One line. Control line. A pink-red control line appears in the control area of the test unit and no pink-red antibody or antigen line appears in the lower test area or the upper test area of the test unit, respectively. A non-reactive test result means that HIV-1 or HIV-2 antibodies and HIV-1 P24 antigen were not detected in the specimen. Invalid result, no control line. There is no pink-red control line in the control area of the test unit. Even if a pink-red line appears in the lower test area or the upper test area of the test unit, the result is invalid and the test should be repeated. If the problem persists, contact technical support. For more information, visit globalpointofcare.abbott.com.